on the subject of Titans, from the Journal of Etc., Etc. It's difficult to take an impartial stance on the Titans of the Bastion, having met them and having heard rumors from months before. The crows say that they fought monsters to save a village in Zolyat, but they insist, as always, on speaking in metaphor and cryptic wordplay. What does it actually mean to say that the paladin plunged his face into the deepest depths? I understand the reference to the Prince of Cats, a minor Koshaki deity, but when they say that he fed their people, am I to take them literally? Or was it simply within the tenets of the prince's beliefs that the people be fed, and the crows leapfrog over the connection? I know Mr. Blackstone understands them, but even all these years later, I confess that I do not. At the same time, the Mockingbird sent us word of the Titans from Galeria and Tulane, reawakening ancient technology and saving a young man from some sort of magical corruption. And while those reports are far more cleanly spoken, the content within them is no less fantastical, at times even ridiculous. People growing to tower over the treetops? A Titan getting into schoolyard scuffles with college students? All of that on top of rumors that the Titans were involved in a heist on the estate of the Galerian Culture Admiral that left part of the building charred and frozen and involved the theft of numerous extremely valuable artifacts. It's all a bit much, isn't it? Still, having met the Titans, I can appreciate their tendency to draw tall tales. They are a compelling group from all across the archipelago, and I showed up with a pirate and Bartimaeus Nemo. The same Bartimaeus Nemo who holds the distinction of being the only non-librarian to ever find their way around the Athenium without assistance. It was a few years ago, but I seem to recall him saying something along the lines of, huh, This is nothing. You should see the libraries back home. What a strange statement. I can't argue with the evidence, though. The Titans themselves seem very nervous about the Gala. Almost as nervous as I felt. I suppose they're very recently formed and thus have not had the chance to engage in politicking of this scale before today. Still, they took it well, and with their presence I can't help but wonder if this is the history my lord in literature wishes me to document. The resurrection of an ancient order, technology the likes of the world has not seen in millennia, walking around a banquet hall and doing their best to avoid a political disaster. It is, as I said, extremely compelling. Oh god. Oh lord. Oh no. One of them was walking up to me. Tell me, Miss Fontaine, how far are you willing to go in the pursuit of knowledge? Well, well I touched I... a shiny rock. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Well, I, I think that progress is often... Emily doesn't believe this, but... Progress is often apolitical. It marches forward no matter what you do. So, the way I see it, there's really not much point in uh, putting up boundaries. His, his smile widens, and he says, <laughs> I think, Miss Fontaine, we are going to get along very well. For the record, I'm still on the other side of this table. I can hear all of this. Oh, wait, Sonny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Always sunny title card. Zara joins the cult. <laughs> <laughs> I we can talk to all these people at the like proper gala, right? Yes, there will also be like a gala. okay, okay. I do because I do need to talk to Skrillex and and convince him to give my boy a job, but that's for later. Because uh-huh. um, I do need to talk to this mysterious bear. Um, so. Uh, uh-huh. Uh, Adeline walks over and, and just introduces herself and says, uh, I didn't hear your, uh, your name get, uh, uh, announced by the crier. Um, 
I'm at my Fleetwood. Oh, uh, and, and she, like, she kind of jumps when you approach her, like she didn't expect anybody to notice her. Um, she said, oh, yes, hi, hello, um, I am, et cetera, et cetera. I, I am a oh. librarian. Oh, uh, well. I, yes, I was here first so that I would know everyone's name. Your name is Adelaide Fleetwood. Adeline Fleetwood. You're a titan. You're, oh, you're the part of the bastion. D- that's me. Um, that's you. <laughs> where's your, you're a librarian? Where do you, where do you work? Where's your library? Oh, she kind of like, 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 like puffs up and she says, I work for the library. Oh. The Obsidian Athenium. The Black Library in Revelation. Okay, where is that for me? <laughs> that is one of the three holy cities of Castellon. Oh, Ooh, I, oh okay. that's a place I need to go. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm, so and she says, "I'm." I, she like holds up her, she like waves her journal, and um, as she is writing down this conversation, she says, "I'm documenting this entire event for the for the library." Oh, that's. That's wonderful. Um, as a thing, it's like established backstory that Adeline spent a chunk of childhood in Castellon because that's where Dwarf Mum is from. Mm-hmm. So, does she would know what about this library, right? I guess uh, must you yeah, a yeah. famous library? Okay, it's fucking yeah, it's huge. It is like it is like yeah, it is. Is it, is like, it is, the Avatar Library from Avatar: The Last uh, Airbender? It, it's a lot like that. Um, mm. I was gonna say, is it like um open to the public? Most or is of it, it like a okay? Uh, then it's, she's been it's there. It's like this huge, like, like shopping mall sized library. Fuck yeah, fuck yes! I love me a good fantasy library. Um, then Adeline has definitely been there, uh, and she says, "Oh, like oh, the that's uh, I've been I've been to the, to the library. It's um." I can't imagine how you find everything in that place. It's so big. We have an extremely complicated but very intuitive uh, uh, catalog, catalog system. That's that's uh, that's so impressive. Um, I guess I'm gonna hmm. Rub elbows. Is why why not? Um, bring up the character sheet. How did I do? Right. Nine. All right. That's one question. One question. Hmm. Where should I be looking? Where should you be looking? Uh, she, she asked, like, uh, you know, you've, you've been cataloging, cataloging everything. Uh, you know, what do you think I should be on the lookout for? <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I mean, really everything. This is such a, such a, a incredible space. There, there's so many... So many unique things. This the the uh, the first the first Lycanvar to be seen in over a century, and 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 even your own group, people from across the archipelago. Uh, it's uh, we are standing in the ho- like history in the making here, which is why I'm you know documenting it ob- obviously, but uh, really um. In terms of things to be on the lookout for, if you, you adventure, right, you go all you go all over the place. I do. If you if you see if you come across any rare or unique or unusual tomes, it would be it would mean the world if you would bring them to the library, or if you have any yourself, bring give them to, like show them to me, because you know cataloging every piece of knowledge imaginable is is part of the job. Oh well, I would be happy to do that. Uh... For uh, and she, she says, uh, I mean, I, I didn't say I grew, I grew up in Castellon, so it's just like, yeah, fellow, fellow person. <laughs> she's, she's very happy. Um, oh, she's also got little, little, little glasses. I know, just in her sprite, she's adorable. Yeah. Okay, so she mentions books. Um, Adeline is like, oh yeah, I'll do. It. Then she's like, oh, actually, and she dives into her because she's got a bag, and mm. uh, and pulls out. The book that she got from Fletcher at the very start of the campaign, um, and hands it to her. It says, I uh, can, can you make any sense of this? I, um, uh, my uh, alarm is about to go off. Nope. <laughs> um, you hand this book to et cetera, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That's her name. 
Uh, and her eyes go wide and her bugbear ears shoot up and she goes, ah! And she, like, like, like <laughs> jumps and, and hits her back against the wall. Adeline also jumps. That was very alarming. <laughs> and she said, where did you get this? Where did you get this? Uh, um, a friend left it for me. Uh, it's, it's not in, I don't even know what language is this, language is this. Dude. This is, this is the oldest language. This oh. is the language. The, the, the first one. I, d- I don't know anything about that. Adeline Fleetwood, this is the tongue of the gods. Oh. What, uh, Radiant from, the cross, from across the room. What? <laughs> Zara from across the room. And we haven't heard of this until now. We've just been carrying Shut up, guys. <laughs> it's just a um, weird... I thought it was just a weird just poetry a weird book. a dumb book. <laughs> and, and, and she... She kind of, like, grabs you and says, I need to... I need to... Can I can I keep, hold on to this? I can bring it back to you tonight after supper. Um, I, I can I can I can, I can I know a little bit. I can probably translate the title. Actually, that would be I would really helpful. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This is oh my gosh! Tables. Oh. I, I just I'm, I'm I'd nervously click and select things on the on the thing and then sometimes yeah. I accidentally move. Yeah. Um but she's like almost hyperventilating. This is the most this is the oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, uh et cetera. Uh it's <laughs> you, take a minute. <laughs> just you 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 have to rush. She like leans she like leans against the the the, 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 the um the wall and like is like wheezing. I love okay. her so much. <laughs> Adeline is Adeline is the like waiters going around with wine or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There are. Yeah, she like wipes one over and takes a, like a glass of wine and like pushes it into Isidore's hand. Like, take it's, it's, here, have a have and a drink. She just fucking knocks the whole thing back and hands it to the waiter. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta keep my mission. I gotta keep my my. There's my job in mind. I can't just yes. I can't just run off and translate it right now. I need to I need to wait. I need to I need to stay through supper and then I can run to my room and translate it. <laughs> okay. Uh then I will speak to you later. And she's like lets her calm down. Um she gives you a big hug and oh says, my God. Thank you so much. Oh, that's, that's that's okay. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> pat pat. <laughs> Oh, hug bear, boy. hug bear. She's so soft. She has like very, very soft fur, like softer than a normal bug bear. Um, because she, it, she doesn't have like like bristly like protect you from the elements fur. <laughs> oh, bear. good. Yeah, she's adorable. Uh, all, right. all right, back to this. That's Adel- That's Adeline. Yeah. Uh, Ford. Oof. Okay. Who here doesn't hate me? <laughs> uh, oh, what here does uh, hate? What here hates me? <laughs> what here hates me? <laughs> Tons of people, I'm sure. Uh, who's that at the center table? Uh, at the center table is um, Gennen Strauss von Roche, uh, Rienen Walden, and uh, Joran von Jaeger. Okay, so no one who hates me. Nope. Great. I'm gonna go over um and Jaeger looks like out of place. Yes, uh Yorin Yorin looks out of place. Uh Yorin has has their dog sitting in a chair next to them. Oh good. <laughs> um, and also their hunting hawk sitting on the table and like playing with grapes. Oh good. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Many animals. I awkwardly pat Kevin on the shoulder. Mm-hmm. And go. Uh, it's uh, good seeing you. Yeah, yeah, R- really good. Skrillex, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to go over and I want to sit next to this this wild child. Um, Yorin ha- is wearing the yellow um, military uniform, or I just guess uniform dress uniform of the Jaeger clan uh, with a black sash. Um, 
and has like this just wild mop of brown hair and is very like tan for being outside a lot. Wait, what's their first name? Yorin. Okay, not Aaron. Okay. <laughs> no, not Aaron Yeager, no. Okay. Uh, and I guess Ford kind of sits down and is like, uh, hey. Hello. Is that, a, is that a dog? Is that a wolf? Yes, that's my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> both of those things. A, a wolf, a dog is just a wolf that is more friendly. Ford and thinks all, about it, yeah. All of the wolves that I train are very friendly. Dope. Uh, unless you're a bad person, and then I say the word that I'm not going to say right now, and then they kill you. Can you spell the word? <laughs> um okay and they take out a piece of paper and they write out the word like the baronese word for attack ah pretty straightforward yeah i like it yeah uh, it's you know uh, a handful of commands are, are very versatile uh uh for why are you talking form. to me <laughs> okay uh i'm Joran. Von Jaeger. That's my that's my name. And this is um Ca- Cassius. That's Cassius. Yes. And this is Gaius. Cassius Gaius. Yes. Uh He just looked like he spent a lot of time out in the forest and uh lived out there for a while. Yes, I spend almost all of my time in the forest and I really I don't know why I'm here. <laughs> um on the other side of you there's a there's a woman um who who leads in and says I also spend a lot of time in the forest and don't know why I'm here. <laughs> hey, me too. Hey, Rian and Walden, it's a pleasure. Usually my sister does this, but she's a metamorphosis now, I guess. Ooh. Which one is that uh Which one is she? The one Miss Hawthorne, I right. guess. And she has like a ale and she just keeps drinking it. Damn. Looks a little stuck up, huh? No offense. No. No, she's like the nicest and most charismatic and vivacious person ever. And I just cut trees. Oh. Hey, cutting trees is important. Yes, they, it is. I wish I was doing it right now instead of being... This political. Uh-huh. What is this? And oh she, like, God! She, like, I know, right? T- she tugs at her sash. I don't fucking know. It's a piece of material that you sling over your shoulder. That's fucking pointless. All of this is pointless. I don't. <sighs> she buries her hand in her hands. I pat her on the shoulder. I want to roll mm. rubbing elbows. Okay, with the uh, Yorin or with Rhiannon. I guess with Renan, because Yorin just looks like a good, good animal child. Yes. Um, all right. Oh, wow. Nine. <laughs> with my minus one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, on a seven to nine. Uh, I guess they don't know why they're here, which is valid. Mm-hmm. I guess, uh, what here interests you? Uh, isn't there anything here that is, like, fun for you? Uh, that you're into? I mean, that I'm into? And they're like, her eyes kind of flick over to, 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 uh, Florian. Ah! <laughs> Aha! You know. I mean, people, people aren't all bad. No. No, they sure aren't. Ford is delighted. <laughs> Uh, and then on the other side of the table is a very big and fluffy uh, Persian cat, Koshaki. <laughs> He's got a big flat face and, and little <laughs> little golden spectacles on his nose. That's so cute! <laughs> yeah. And he says, Personally, I think that this is quite delightful. Would you please pass the caviar? What the f- <laughs> oh, perfect. Here are your fucking fish eggs, dude. Thank you very much. And he eats them. <laughs> but like, God just bless. like chows into it like a cat eats from like from a cat food tin, just like. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 
Thanks. This is his wet food day. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. <laughs> it's quite delicious. Oh my Aww. god. Uh, so, uh, do either of you two fight? <laughs> You'll fight? No. 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 Uh, uh, I mean, I swing an axe. I could fight if I had to, but I mostly I swing my axe at things that aren't moving, like that's, trees. That's fair. It's fair. It's a good. It's a good profession. Uh. All right. Uh, that, that was your. That was your turn, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think to round that out, Ford goes. Um, y'all ever see anything weird in the woods? I don't know, like a man with really long legs. <laughs> that's uh, it. Yor- Yorin just points at w- uh, Wayland. <laughs> Confirmed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Radiant. Hi. Hi. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk to Chris Hemsworth. I guess. Absolutely. Here I, here feel, I go. Feel free to talk to Chris A. Hemsworth. All right. I'm gonna uh, sit. AKA Mr. Thoreau, the a member of the. <laughs> Yeah, he has a real name that I will remember. Yeah, it's Mister Thoreau. Yeah. Um. Uh, what was the name of the lady sitting next to him? Miss Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Okay. Miss Hawthorne. Miss Hawthorne. Okay. Mm-hmm. I can remember that because that's the name of a community character. I'm not <laughs> married, silly. They're all, they're all named. They're all named after authors. Yeah, but I don't read. <laughs> Do I look like I read? <laughs> Not a fucking nerd. Yeah, okay, you got me. <laughs> hey, listen, I'm a lit major and I don't read. <laughs> God. Um, okay, I'm gonna greet all of them, I suppose, because they're in a they're a trio. Um, yeah. Hi, how's how's it how's it hanging? How's it going? Um, Miss Hawthorne's like uh, she's got like this really kind of like Princess Leia braided hair. You know how. Uh, Princess Leia always had really great, like, braided hair mm-hmm. in yeah. all the movies. She's got that. It's, like, in the best possible way. She's got this very pretty green dress. The colors of the Valden family, even though she's not representing the Valden family anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, she is the sister of Rhiannon Walden, who is the, now the new representative of the Walden family. Yeah. Um, and she kind of grins, uh, gives you this very nice smile, and she says, "Oh, this is just fantastic! It's it's lovely to see everybody. You know, it's not often that we get invited by the Argents. They they're very reclusive as a as a as a family. Usually, they come to our summer chateaus or or our winter <laughs> lodges. Um, and then uh, Mister Thoreau leans around her and says, "This is fucking awesome." <laughs> There's food, there's drinks, there's the mountain air. Can you just feel it invigorate your soul? Radiant is like, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't say it with the cussing, but yeah, I totally agree. Listen, friend, there's just some times where simple words aren't enough. You need something with a little oomph in it. I, I, res- I respect that. Uh... What do you, what do you guys, I guess I need to roll for this. Cause to have roll babbles? Yeah. Yes. Because you're uh, approaching a guest to gather information. Yes. Uh, charisma. Charisma. My charisma is plus three. I cannot fail he... this. Don't say, okay. <laughs> one question. Nine. Yeah. Um, one question. Let me see the list again. Uh, what here interests you? Or do you find suspicious? Um, let me go with, uh, Radiant knows about the metamorphosis, right? He read the note. Uh, yeah, yeah. Ford, if short Ford showed that to everyone, which I'm pretty sure he yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. What do you, you guys are the, the magic people. What are you guys up to here in, with the metal, the metal stuff? Oh. Um, we're not here necessarily for the metal stuff. We're more, uh, you could call us evangelicals. Uh Uh-huh. It's important that we show, you know, the results, any flexes. (laughs) Radiant blushes. You know, (laughs) when I was a kid, I was a sickly 80-pound weakling. I, I broke my bones every other year. 
I, 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 I had the, con- you know, I, I, I fought pneumonia. I barely survived till my 12th birthday. Then Mr. Emerson found me. <laughs> yeah, I used to be a skinny twink. And, oh, and then I became the muscle <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so no. he's a combination of the two Chris's, Chris Hemsworth and Chris Evans. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and Rob McElhinney. He says, I nearly died dozens of times as a child simply because I was born with a body too weak to, to, to withstand the, the elements and the, and, the, and the viruses and bacteria and sicknesses that plagued my community. But Mr. Emerson was able to help me. He, he, he was able to, with his, with his incredible scientific abilities, he, his, his, his blood therapy transformed me into a, the peak of human physical fitness. Wait, pause that. Go back. What do, what's, yes. blood, what's blood therapy? Just curious. It's, it's, the, it's the cornerstone of the metamorphosis's uh, entire ideal system. There, if you aren't the way that you want to be, you don't have to be it. If, you're, if you know enough or can find somebody who knows enough to, to administer the correct treatments, you can be anything you want to be. That, that sounds like it could go wrong, doesn't it? It could, maybe. I haven't seen it go wrong yet, and I trust Mr. Emerson with my life. Huh. Have you considered uh God? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to word that. <laughs> Have you considered following a different kind of faith? Well, I'll tell you, little man. Wouldn't you rather There's be a, a lot- big man? <laughs> At first, I was a wimp, and now I'm a jerk, and everyone loves me with anchor <laughs> arms. Um, well, you know, I've been to a lot of places following Mr. Emerson. I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of faiths that don't really add up. People starving in the streets. People dying of disease. I haven't seen those prayers been answered. But Mr. Emerson answered mine. Oh, yeah. Well, our... Tella is different because he's trapped and he can't, like, do stuff, but... Well, how about you get him out and we can see what he can do. Fine. I'll do it. I'll do that. <laughs> you know what? Fine. Awesome. I, I, I don't mean that with any sort of scorn. I, I wish you the best of luck in that endeavor. <laughs> but also, I don't think you're going to do it. <laughs> Hello, and thank you for listening to Roll, Dice, and Cry. This is Zach, your friendly neighborhood GM, and you're listening to On the Shoulders of Giants, episode 33. The big 3-3. Three, three. Uh, by the time you hear this, Mari's Kickstarter for the Life of Melody graphic novel will be finished. Hopefully everyone is able to get their pledges in in time so that you can get a copy of this great and fun-looking comic. Uh, as with every week, you can check out Mari's webcomic at parrytale.com, as well as Emily's webcomic at bluevalkyriecomic.tumblr.com. Make sure to give them both a look if you like fairy tales and superheroes uh today uh we have one review to read it is from tellers uh on september 24th tellers is a fantastic artist who does, who's done a lot of fan art for the show you can find that at at uh, tellersplace.tumblr.com shouting you out tellers because you're great uh let me get to that review uh the, it is <clears throat> Amazing play podcast with creative people who know how to make kick-ass PCs and NPCs. I've been listening to this podcast since day zero, and it makes me feel like I'm role-playing with my friends. It is refreshing to hear play podcasts with all the NPCs and PCs are so charismatic and relatable. All the players come from a variety of places, genders, and orientations, so expect a wonderfully diverse cast of people to fall in love with. Also, the wonderful DM Zach, that's me, makes it so easy to understand the dynamics of the game systems they use. So if you're new to Dungeon World, this is a nice podcast to get the dynamics of the system. This podcast needs all the love. I expect to hear them grow as players and as podcasters. 10 out of 10, come roll dice and cry with us. Thank you so much, Teller, for that fantastic, extremely, extremely generous review. 
We got one more in the can, but I'm going to leave that for next week because it is just as good and just as long. And if I say too many nice things about myself, I might get a big head. But um, please continue tweeting and blogging about the show using the hashtag Articast. Word of mouth is far and away the best method for our show to reach new ears. And it is extremely important that we get as many ears as possible. And we appreciate each one. Coming up, here's the rest of the episode. Have a great day. And until next time, remember... Sometimes the real treasure was the friends we made along the way, and sometimes it was the cursed amulet that speaks in eldritch tongues and weeps blood in the dead of night. Okay. Radiant is, like, wary. But also he, th- he genuinely thinks that Mr. Thoreau is, like, a nice person. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Oh, you also haven't done what here is evil. I did. Did no, I? No, you did, but that was only with half the people here. Oh, yeah, sure. What here is evil? Is it that guy who did all the shit with magic? Uh, Solomon is still evil. Sure. Um, which, which guy? The guy who uh, Thoreau was just talking about. Emerson? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Emerson is evil. Yeah, of course he is. Uh, also, Mr. Is Thoreau Mr. evil? Mr. Palm and Miss Fist, Thoreau is not evil. I'm going to save Chris Hemsworth from his cult. <laughs> and Zara's going to get involved in some real bad shit. <laughs> uh, do we, uh, do we want to, is, is there anything more you want to talk about Emerson, with Emerson about? Uh, yeah. Radiant did the what's he, what here is evil check and he's immediately like, I need to get these friendly people out of here. I need, I have to save them. <laughs> <laughs> from, oh, from Emerson? Oh yeah, from Emerson. So I'll yeah. I'll say to Emerson like you know I I I I really would like to read a little more of your literature I'm I'm kind of interested in what uh, you're saying I've I've <laughs> often theorized that uh, that this the behemoth flood magic could be used uh, with um, precision in uh, in medicine and with precision and the proper handling it absolutely can. Uh, while Zara is talking to Emerson and Emerson is turned, has his back turned to Radiant, Radiant is like doing the little hand gesture to stop, like at his neck. Like at Zara, Zara? Like, yeah, like cut it out. Like, no, no, bad. <laughs> He's bad. I like, I look at Radiant like, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I give you like a weird shrug, but we'll talk mm-hmm. later about that. Yeah. But, and that's those are the rounds. So as as, as that conversation continues to to, to go, um, you hear a, like a ding 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 as as Florian um, taps. Uh, uh, Rand is holding the glass, and Florian is tapping it with a fork. <laughs> um, Hold my glass, mate. Yeah, because you only got one hand. Oh, I forgot she had one hand. My yeah. bad. Because <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, you know, anyway, um, and she says, "Attention." Uh, everybody, everyone, this has been a lovely evening so far, and I hope that we we wind into a a lovely weekend here in Castle Silverholm. We have so much to show you, and I would love to show you our first our first revelation today, tonight. Mm-hmm. And she looks over at at um, Nathaniel. The foreman, the first foreman of of uh, Revelation, and, and smiles, and she says, B- "Before I do, I would ask that, uh, or warn that any any guests here who are uh, have an easily upset stomach, or perhaps uh, a squeamish sort of sensibility, uh, feel free to to leave, and you will be given a full uh, write up of, of of today's tonight's." Mm, Demonstration. I glance over oh, at boy. Kevin. Is he looking okay? <laughs> um, he's he's looking. Yeah, he's not looking scared. He's just kind of like, kind of just chill. Okay, cool. I look at Radiant like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like exchanging glances, like ah, uh, th- these people um, make metal, right? Yeah. Uh, and she um, she says. Please, uh, those of you who wish to see, follow me. And she goes over to the bandstand. Yeah, I'm there. Yeah, yeah, going, yeah. yeah. yeah we All we right, going over. Go. Yeah. Where the um, the people, the the uh, 
you know, orchestra has, has kind of settled. And, um, the first thing you notice is that, that Wayland ducks into a side room, um, and comes out with something wrapped in a bag or wrapped in a, in a cloth. Oh, as, as people watch. Florin and Brand climb up onto the bandstand, looking out over all of you crowded around in front of her watching. She closes her eyes and turns her head to Brand. Brand, please help me if you would. She unclasps her cape, where you can see her uniform jacket with the right sleeve pinned up, as Brand starts to help her undo the buttons on the jacket. Florian turns back to the rest of you and starts to speak. I am not unaware that my lack is a matter of public gossip. I've heard the sorts of rumors regarding my handedness, and tonight, to begin with, I'd like to lay those rumors to rest. I was not born one-handed, but rather lost my right arm in an accident in my youth. The very fact that I survived the injury in the first place was... Her eyes flick over to drift between Ford and Radian, and then she squeezes them shut before addressing the audience again. It was miraculous. And in the intervening years, I have learned to adapt. My entire military service, both in the Silver Suns and in Baron proper, I have been one-handed, and I defy any of my previous opponents to claim that my lack of both hands made me any less capable a warrior. In the crowd, Dauntless LaRue shuffles his feet and crosses his arms. Mr. Emerson and Mr. Thoreau exchange a glance. Fridafoya von Berengar nods. Florian sighs, gives a tight smile. That said, Brand finishes unbuttoning Florian's jacket and it slides off of her into his hands. She's wearing a simple sleeveless undershirt and you can see that her right shoulder is a mass of mottled scar tissue, long heeled but still gnarly, with a shining metal cap on where her shoulder joint would be. Rian and Valden lets out a gasp and Florian chuckles. Cannonballs, huh? Anyways, like I was saying, some things are more easily achieved with both hands. Before, my condition was static, unchanging. Uh, it, as with all things in life, presented a new status quo, and it was up to me to live with that. Now, however, a and she gestures with her hand and Waylon steps up onto the bandstand, holding their wrapped package. Florian grins. Now, I have options. Wayland, if you would. Wayland unwraps the package they were holding, revealing a gleaming metal arm. It is polished steel and silver, and they pull out a little glowing blue vial and tip it into a reservoir on the forearm, and the engravings on the arm seem to flex or shimmer or something briefly. Then Wayland holds it up to Florian's shoulder, where the metal cap on her joint sockets into the arm, and with a click... You hear the whirring of gears and clockwork as Florian lifts her hand, closes her fist, and then opens it again. Now, advances like this in terms of small-scale clockwork, miniaturized springs, motors, and the rare, you, nearly unique power source that Wayland has been able to create means that items like this will be custom commission only for the foreseeable future. However... Our engineers, led by Mixavaldi, will continue to refine our process until someday this technology may be available for any citizen of the archipelago that needs it. Florian starts to show off the range of motion of the mechanical arm, drawing her sword with her flesh and blood hand, twirling it around in a bunch of complicated patterns before tossing it into the air, catching it with her mechanical arm, and repeating the same patterns with that hand. Our clockwork prosthetics use a combination of confidential argent alloys to operate properly, as well as a special fuel source that is only known to a handful of individuals in the archipelago. For the time being, commissions of some pieces will be handed solely through the Argent Dynasty Clockwork Guild. Please, if you have any additional questions, please seek either myself or Mexivaldi out when you have a chance over the weekend. Florian waves the prosthetic arm one last time and bows before saying, This has all been very exciting, and I... There's so much more I want to show you, and I can't wait, and I hope that you can't either. But for tonight, at least, I need some rest. 
And so, uh, Brand helps Florian off the bandstand and they make their way upstairs. And then, boom, everyone starts talking about this. Uh, what is the mood amongst the Titans? I want to know how good this thing punches. <laughs> I was going to make this. Mm-hmm. I have <laughs> a suspicion out of character that I think might be be able to be a suspicion in character because I'm playing a smart and perceptive character. Okay. Could I roll a um, Spout Lord to find out if I can just guess what it's made of? Absolutely. Okay. I got a 10. Is it made of Fontanium? It looks a lot like it. Ooh. Thought so. They got it. You you would definitely have to look closer, like 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 handle it to see if it had the the same all of the same qualities. But like you look at that and you see like something that dense, you couldn't make something that dense and complicated out of normal steel. Right. Um. There, there's something going on. Um. Can I? Can I also do a spout large just because? I want to see if I recognize that glowing blue liquid as the same thing as the bottom of that pond that I dove into. Yep. Sure. Yeah. My aunt is significantly worse than Zara's, so let's <laughs> let's go. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Fuck. Uh, that's oh a my four. god. <laughs> oh, that's a four, that that's a four, four for the radiant. Oh, the radiant, you're gonna level bitch up, in town. aren't you? Yeah. Uh... Radiant. Oh boy, Radiant. Oh boy, <laughs> Radiant. I only failed three out of four times. It's fine. Yeah, but Radiant. <laughs> um, You look and you look at her as she like walks up uh, like walks up the stairs and you can't you're like, who cares about the blue liquid? Uh-huh. I can't trust her. Uh-huh. Fun. Yeah. That's good. I follow instinct. Always. Yep. Hell yeah. And so that's Did- the potty. What's up? Oh well, yeah. I was gonna say, did you say can or can't trust her? I didn't quite. Can't. Can't. Cannot. Can't. Can't. Okay. I don't can't. trust All like right. that. Um, so that's, that's like the, I think the party is, is mostly petered up by then. People start going up to their rooms, but et cetera, et cetera, comes up to you, Adeline. Yes. Uh, and says, all right, just give, just give me a couple hours. I'll be right back. I need to, I'll, I'm going to translate this. Okay. All right. Where do you, where do you want me to meet you? Um, 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 uh, there's a, st- where are you, where are you staying? I'm in a room. <laughs> okay. Is there a library here? Uh, there's a salon. I think I saw like a book, like a bookshelf in it. Then the bookshelf. Okay. 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 Pats her out. She just <laughs> she clutches the book to her chest and dashes off. All right. Where's Radiant? I'm gonna tell him something. Oh. Yeah, I think y- y'all can come meet in your room and 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 kind of debrief before before et cetera et cetera finds you again. I want to catch Radiant before we go into the room and tell him alone. Oh, okay. Sure. Oh yeah. I think that this is. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't want everybody to know yet <laughs> about my secret book. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Because Zara uses magic bad <laughs> still. <laughs> okay. And you know, Ford's fine, but this is a god boy. Um mm-hmm. so before we get to the room, like this in the like hall outside, like uh Adeline stops reading, it's like one sec, and then they the rest of everyone goes in and she's Um, so I have this book, had this book, uh, and it was in a different language. And uh, that white bugbear 
who was hanging around, so she can translate it, and uh, that is, uh, it's about gods, and I thought you should know that. Can she, can she read it? Because, I, like, not... She said she can read it a little. No, I mean, can she read, because I can understand any language if it's spoken to me. Oh my fucking god. So if she can <laughs> That's a good point. Read, That's a good ass point. If she point. can read the words out loud, even if she's not translating them, I can understand it. I'm meeting her later. You should come and we will test that? Yeah. Yeah, of course. Hell Hell yes. Oh she will be if if she can do that, she's gonna she was very excitable. She's gonna lose it. <laughs> Gonna Nick freaking lose it, as it were. All right, McDonald's is a staple in <laughs> the endless sea. Fuck yeah, in Cast in Castellon. Mm-hmm. Uh, we love McDonald's. All right, and you all you all come back uh, to the room. Yeah, and, and you get a little bit of chatting done uh, while she's translating. Okay, so I'm pretty sure that that arm is made of fontanium. Didn't you invent but that? We're the only pe- we're the only people who have that. Yeah, are we? There was spontaneum also in the in the uh, uplink, right, Nemo? Uh, it was made of it. Right, e- exactly. And, and and if if there's some, if it was made of it, and there was a big store of it in the bastion, then it's possible that there could have been a store in it in any of the other uplinks or any other old Titan locations. I, I look. I'm not. I'm not 100 percent certain. I have to get a closer look at it, and and maybe I'll have to do that with um. With Wayland later, but um, I'm pretty sure it's something like that. You think Wayland will? Uh, liquid. You think Wayland will just like give up their like secrets? I guess if well, well, I don't mean to brag, but <laughs> uh, I'm kind of a charmer, and I roll my I, I like roll my hand through my head, oh like, my god the ears back like it's hair. <laughs> <laughs> it's hair. Ah. Uh, that's funny. I'll I'll just turn on my old the old uh, Fontaine charm. <laughs> Get it. Good luck. Good. <laughs> hey, hey, just real quick. Did anyone does anyone else think that Florian is like super suspicious and untrustworthy? Uh, I think everybody no. is. No, hmm. she seemed really nice to me. Huh. Okay, no, just that just that question. Um, Anyone the- know if she's into lumberjacks, though? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. No, says Daria. <laughs> Let's find out what what kind of what kind of girls Silence. Florian is into. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows that. Nobody's spoken to her yet. <laughs> Nobody has any idea what you're talking about, Ford. <laughs> and Daria, Daria leans forward and she just says. Y'all know that that steps in silence kid totally kills people for money, right? Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Hey, hey, can we talk about how that's Jameson's brother really quick? Because that's bugging me. <laughs> yeah, Jameson's like a, like a, like a wimpy, like a little baby boy. Did I mean, with an older that? brother like that. It's like if Jameson has an evil twin. With Who the was goatee. actually two years older. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everything else yeah. checks out. You know, actually, now this is just rumor. This is just a thing. But you know who he might be working for? Florian? Uh, is- Florian. He's Maybe. F- the metamorphosis? No. And and, and Nemo rolls his eyes because you're all, y'all are just going to guess all day. Yeah, we're going to take turns <laughs> guessing until we get it. And he says, I think she's uh, implying that he works for the Cazadors. They're like a Castellonian assassin brotherhood sort of thing. Like a they, creed? Like a creed. A creed of assassins. <laughs> like an assassin's creed. <laughs> Like a, they're like a black flag creed of assassins origins. <laughs> like a, like a, like a secret society. Um, they're mostly rumored, but like it's like an open rumor where they 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 keep an, they keep tabs on heads of states and uh-huh. dangerous people, and then if they're if they're gonna you know 
if if they determine that they're gonna pose a problem overall, sort of a sort of a, a checks and balances kind of thing. If you I look over at Radiant, well, maybe we should take him out <laughs> before it poses a problem. And maybe we shouldn't be looking to incapacitate any of the guests at this party that we are invited to. Eh. Can we make an exception for Tony? No, we can't kill Tony. <laughs> I don't want to kill him. I want to be perfectly clear. You just want to okay. take him out. So you want to date him or what? <laughs> oh, I, I don't think that Ford wants to date Tony. Ford yes, everyone spins currently. around. <laughs> hey, God. hey, Kevin. Kevin's here, huh? Kevin's here? Yeah, uh, who knew? Who is who knew? Kevin? Yeah. Well, Kevin? I mean, I know who Kevin is, but I don't know. Never mind. Kevin is Ford's ex, because that's what he told us. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody know somebody here? I don't. Neither do I. Uh, do I know anyone? No. Oh, it's only four. <laughs> oh, so actually, Adeline, um, oh? you at this moment you pat your pockets. Oh. Um, and you kind of idly remember uh, Lantern's Light, like patting you on the back when you got up from talking with Dauntless Larue. Oh. And in your the pocket of your jacket, it says Fletcher says hi. Fuck. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah, great. Awesome. Uh, Adeline goes really weirdly quiet after giving Ford shit about Kevin. Just looks at a note from her pocket and goes completely silent. <laughs> Addy, okay, well. are you, uh, are you okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm fine. Puts the note back in her pocket. Okay, well, if we're all done being weirdos, why don't we figure out what, you know, <laughs> Who should, who should we be looking out for? Because I spoke with Emerson, and it was he was a very interesting fellow. Emerson is, is evil. He's an evil person. What? I can sense when people are evil and he's evil. That's... Okay. Just trust me on this. Come on, Radiant. You can't just say somebody is evil by looking at them. I can. I do it all the time. According to a very specific set of precepts. Yeah, he's I not going to say that, though. No, no, Nemo that's what Nemo that. says. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, but does it mean the precepts are incorrect? No. <laughs> yeah, as Nemo isn't, just isn't, shrugs. Uh, uh, Adeline's been to God school, so she says, yeah, aren't Tella's precepts fairly straightforward? <laughs> I don't think Tella's precepts is like too out there as far as definitions of evil is concerned. <laughs> Well, I guess, Nemo just shrugs. I guess that uh, um, Francesca, one of the um, Laganels, uh, she was suspicious of um, Emerson as well. But, but uh, I, I don't know. You know, I, I guess I, I sort of think a lot like him sometimes. He, he, after all, he likes to push the boundaries of science, and that's a good thing. Radiant mm-hmm. is gonna check if Zara is evil just like one more time, real quick. <laughs> Uh, no, I don't think she's evil. Alright. Yeah. Hey. Yet. <laughs> Watch your mouth. Hmm. <laughs> we'll, we'll get there. We'll fucking get there. When I'm evil, you will all know. Please. When Thank I'm you. evil, you, have you guys to. will fucking know. Because there will be you nothing to. left of you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're already doing so, experiments on me, so... I, I, you can't see this, but I've taken, taken two fingers and pointed them at my eyes, and I've turned them around and pointed them at you all. <laughs> eyes forward, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Okay. All right. All right. I like to think that Zara did all that in character. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, at this point, there was a... There is a knock at the door, and you hear like a the voice on the other side going, "Okay, it's time to be in the library now. Thank you. Bye." And then you hear <laughs> like 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 feet running away. Uh, who is that? <laughs> she is discreet. Um, that <laughs> is it's just a that is a lead that I am following up uh, with Radiant's help. Just like grabs, <laughs> like touches his shoulder, and is oh, like, "Yep, yep, here we go." I'm gonna. 
I'm going to pop off and I'm going to say, well, you two have fun. I'm going to go talk to Wayland. I think they're, I think they might be the best person to, to get us going. Yeah, see if you can find where that Fontanian comes from. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm also going to go follow a lead. Don't join a cult, Zara. Shut up. Uh, Zara, j- just to remind you that, that you were told to watch your door tonight. Well, I, yeah. Okay. Wait, I thought, I assumed he meant he was going to shove something under the door. Yes, but you can't see it if you're not here. Yeah, but I'll come back. It's not going anywhere. Maybe. And someone could no. come back f- first. I, 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 yes, that's true, but I'm, I, I don't think it's like privilege. Me, Zara, I don't imagine that it's privileged information, so I'm not worried about it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. Let's go follow up our leads. Hell yeah. Radiant and Adeline, you guys go yes. to the library? Yeah, hell yes. yeah. The bookshelf. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's, you walk into the library and, um, for a second, you don't see et cetera, et cetera. And then you realize it's because she is crouching behind like the corner of the bookshelf. Oh my god. <laughs> she just says, It's you! Good. Et cetera. Hi. Radiant hides with her. Hi. Hi. Okay, okay. This, this, is a, this is a fine place to be. This way, prying ears and prying eyes won't be able to hear us. Yeah, yes. I agree. But this, is, this is Radiant. Uh, he's a Hi. paladin. Hello. Hello, you're a paladin of Chella. I am. I have a I have a tongue that transcends languages right now. Currently, that's re- that's really important. Not the tongue part. Congratulations, oh. the Chella part. <laughs> oh, um, I don't get that a lot. Thank you. Yes. T- did you did you translate anything? Yes, I have the title and the subtitle. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> um. Okay, this is kind of really important. You guys are the Titans, right? That's, like, your whole thing? Yeah. Y- yeah. Okay. Then this is very pertinent for information to you. And she puts the book down, and she turns it around, and she runs her finger across the top of it, the front page, oh, the, like, the, the, the title part, and she says, This book is called... The Fall of Holy Penumbra, The City in the Shade, The Moonshore, The Testament to God's Love, or How the Titans Chained Chella. <laughs> uh, that's the last line if you weren't yeah yeah that's the episode no kidding I think. oh that's a good radiant, radiant just immediately pops a blood vessel <laughs> opening of the next episode is like an extended scream for like a full minute of just radiant